Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to explain my initial thoughts on the multiple guilty verdicts into Boris Johnson from the Privileges Committee, as well as the immediate reaction from uh, Boris Johnson world. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So uh, it's quite difficult to know what to talk about today. Uh, a report has been published which finds Boris Johnson guilty of five different contempts of parliament. So uh, we might as well talk about that. Because that was the standout for me. Johnson is guilty of five different types of contempt of parliament. Not five counts, way more than five counts. No, five completely different types. He was only been investigated for one. <laughs> With a quarter of a million quid to pay for, of our money to pay for the best lawyers in the land. How do you conduct a defence where you end up being found guilty of five completely different contempt offences when you were only being investigated for one. So let's just go through each one in turn really quickly. So first one, deliberately misleading the house. This is the one he was investigated for. This is the one he's found guilty for. This is basically deliberately lying to the House of Parliament. We know he did this, the House of Commons in this case. We know he did this, the public knows he did this. Everyone knows he did it. Boris Johnson knows he did it. So that was straightforward. Then deliberately misleading the committee. Now this is, I bet you it doesn't end up being spicy, but it should be. What the committee are saying is that he lied to them. Now he gave his evidence to them under oath. So obviously there were submissions to them, but they also had to be signed witness statements to be taken seriously. So, and, and that all has the power of perjury. It's a select committee hearing. Select committees very rarely make their witnesses give testimony under oath but when they do it needs to it does ca uh, carry the power of perjury it means that Boris Johnson if the burden of proof is high enough for a criminal investigation should because the public interest is obvious um, you know if a select committee on the rare occasions it makes someone testify under oath if they then lie you have to pursue that otherwise the oath is meaningless so it really will become a point of, is the burden of proof high enough? Because we understand in a criminal trial, to be found guilty, the court has to believe that you are guilty within uh, beyond reasonable doubt. Whereas in a civil court case, for example, um, the court only has to be satisfied that you are more likely to be guilty than not. And it's possible that the Privileges Committee is not a court at all, of course, but they can probably take the view that they just have to be satisfied that you are more likely to be guilty than not. But I would certainly suggest that the Crown Prosecution Service should be looking at the evidence and deciding whether or not there is enough proof that he has lied under oath. The third contempt charge was breaching confidence. So this was last week. So the inquiry was basically over and Boris Johnson still managed to find himself found guilty of another offence. So he was sent the findings that we've now seen published last week and uh, it was last Monday in fact so and he was given two weeks to consider it and respond it was under strict confidence he knew that he was told that uh, he wasn't allowed to divulge any of the, he could have talked to his lawyer of course but he's not allowed to divulge any of the contents publicly he did that that's how we knew before this happened you know several things that were going to be in the report um, so that itself is a contempt of parliament because he has breached confidence the fourth one is impugning the committee and there, thereby undermining the democratic process of the House. So he has attacked the committee as being unfit, you know, kangaroo court, witch hunt, all the rest of it. Uh, this is a direct attack on Parliament. Parliament formed this committee. This isn't a separate committee. This isn't a separate thing. Parliament formed this committee. It's formed from MPs only. It's not like the Standards Committee, which also has lay people on it, which he also tried to attack previously to get his mate Owen Patterson off. No, this is just MPs the majority of whom are Tory MPs, and the one he's thrown under the bus last night, his strongest supporter, or used to be. <laughs> so this is a contempt of Parliament as well, because he's attacking Parliament. This is a committee that was set up by Parliament. No one objected to this particular investigation either. This whole thing has been conducted by Parliament. He's attacking Parliament. And then the final one is being complicit in the campaign of abuse and attempted intimidation of the committee. So it will not have passed anyone who's been paying attention's notice that the media, Boris Johnson's friends in the media and elsewhere, 
have been trying to put committee members under a great deal of pressure to try and browbeat them into giving a lighter sentence or, or lighter punishment um, and or, you know, even a, a less severe verdict. So there has been a deliberate attempt to malign the committee, the individual members of the committee and intimidate them. And Boris Johnson was very much involved in that. So really, five different types of contempt, only one of which he was originally being investigated for. The real mic drop statement, of course, was the news that they were going to recommend a 90-day suspension. They cited not only the seriousness of the, of the offence, but the persistence, the fact that he just kept on lying. He lied to Parliament. He was given an opportunity to correct the record in his committee hearing, he persisted, he persisted to lie. And as prime minister, the standards for his, for his office, needs to be higher than just for a basic MP. And it is strange to think that just two weeks ago, we were wondering, is he going to get a nine day suspension or a 10 day suspension? You know, is it, is it going to be a nine day suspension, you know, from a stitch up uh, as a result of a Tory-dominated committee under massive pressure from party members? Or is it going to be just over the 10, like 11 or 12 days, which will trigger the recall? We was even talk about, or oh, maybe it'll be in 20 days. We were looking at the 30-day suspension of Margaret Ferrier, the former SNP MP. We're thinking, well, she got 30 days. Johnson's offences are way worse. Surely he should get more than that. But you know what? I didn't see a single commentator or journalist or even legal expert who believed that he might. I didn't. I wasn't thinking, oh, he, sh he should get more than 30 days, therefore there is a chance he will. I didn't think there was a chance he would. I was blown away, as blown away as anyone, when I saw 90 days. I had to check it multiple times to make sure I wasn't misreading it as something else. As for the reaction from Johnson's cult, as well as the cult clown himself, it speaks of an intended campaign of civil war. No great surprise. Boris Johnson has said it is for the people of this country to decide who sits in Parliament, not Harriet Harman. Again, they're putting the emphasis on the fact that Harriet Harman is the chair of the committee, but it is led by Conservative MPs, four of them. Now, not only is this the same Boris Johnson who blocked multiple well-regarded Conservative MPs from standing in 2019, as he had the right to do, he's the party leader, but nonetheless, isn't that decide, isn't that an MP deciding who stands in Parliament rather than letting the people decide. But he's also the same Boris Johnson who ran away from the country by resigning as an MP this week, this Monday, formally resigned as an MP. Why didn't he fight his by-election? If it's up to the people, why didn't he put himself to the people? There's, there's no getting away from this. He can conjure up this deluded image in his head as much as he likes. There's no getting away from the fact it was up to the people. All Parliament... Harriet Harman decides nothing. She just decides what font to do the report in, right? She's just the chair. She's one of seven voices on the committee. They recommend a punishment. They would have recommended 90 days. It is for the whole House of Commons, the people's elected representatives, to decide whether they accept that punishment or not. They would have done. But even that, that just stops him entering Parliament for 90 days. That triggers a recall petition. Doesn't stop him being an MP. He hasn't been to Parliament for 90 days anyway. Doesn't matter. That doesn't trigger the... Re the recall petition is his constituents. Do 10% of his constituents say he shouldn't be an MP anymore? Okay, that's only 10%. He's then allowed to stand in the by-election. There were multiple phases to go through. This was not all about Harriet Harman or even just the committee. There were multiple phases which would have actually removed him from Parliament which would have culminated in the people, all of his constituents, in a Tory area, deciding he shouldn't be their MP. And he, he decided not to let the people decide. He consciously decided he wasn't going to allow the people to decide. One of his strongest supporters in Parliament, Brendan Clark-Smith, he took the news of the report so badly that he put his avatar into full mourning on Twitter, replacing it with a black circle. He's claiming to be ready to defend Johnson and attack, attack the committee, both publicly and in Parliament, which to me invites contempt proceedings itself, doesn't it? Boris Johnson was found guilty of two contempts by effectively impugning the committee and also jumping on the bandwagon of others impugning the committee. So shouldn't Brendan Clark-Smith be investigated? Bring in Parliament into disrepute? 
It would be a hilarious way to dial up the pressure on the civil war. So perhaps Tory MPs will not support that move. But it would be maddeningly funny to have him sat in front of the committee, charged with calling the committee a kangaroo court. What is your evidence for this, Mr. Clark Smith? Because you were all mean to Boris. All right. Mind you, Sunak could remove the whip. He could, he could remove the whip. He, he could say to his MPs, no one is to impugn the Privileges Committee. You can, you can make whatever statements you like, but you do not impugn the Privileges Committee. We all appointed it and we supported this process. Every single one of us, there wasn't a single vote against this investigation. Rishi Sunak, if he was a leader, he is not, he could say to his MPs, we do not impugn the committee. You can call into question, if you like, individual elements, if you've got any good reason to do so, but you do not impugn the committee. And anyone who does is losing the whip. But he won't, because he's not a leader. I may have to apologise to him again yesterday, or tomorrow rather, I did do last week. Um, now this is going to get discussed a lot, of course, uh, over today in the coming weeks on this channel, apart from everything else. This is the trigger. This is Andrew Marr recently said he's so bored of Boris. No, I'm not. I'm not. This is the good bit. This is the bit. This is the payoff. This is all we're going to get. We, it, you know, we're not going to see him. Well, we may see him behind bars. We can't rule it out, but I strongly suspect not. You know, I'm glad he's gone from frontline politics. I was sick of him being involved in frontline politics. I, I'm, I'm glad he's not realistically coming back. Not for some considerable time anyway, if he ever does. He probably never will. You can't rule it out long term. You can rule it out now, short term. I'm not going to be bored of discussing him because this is the fun bit. After years of suffering at the hands of a prime minister who did not take his role seriously at all, who got drunk with Russian spies, who, you know, was a serious, so serious a threat to national security that when he was made foreign secretary by Theresa May, he was reputed to have not been given oversight over MI6. This person who caused so much damage, I'm pleased we now enter the phase where those who put him in that position get a full dose of his poison now. Because his attention is now turned on them. Them. And just like Johnson himself, Tory MPs seem to currently think themselves hard done by because they thought they could put this petulant child in charge of the country to win an election and then expect him to go quietly when he'd served his purpose. No, 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 no. That's not Boris Johnson. He's not there to serve a purpose. You are there to serve his purpose. And until the Tories realise that, that, that they give him power to keep screwing them over because it will get to the point where Rishi Sunak is forced to call a general election, not because Parliament runs out of time, not even because he judges that the time is right, that he's got his best shot. No, he will call an election just to shut Boris Johnson up. But there we are. Those are my uh, very initial thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.